Hi there, my name is Teal Francis and I am the Programs and Communications Coordinator with Fairbanks Arts Association. Today, we're delighted to be recording an artist talk with one of our February 2021 exhibitors, John Hagen. John is an Unangan and Inupiaq artist from Haines, Alaska. He studied photojournalism at the University of Fairbanks and earned his BFA degree from the Institute of American Indian Arts. Photography and digital art are his primary media and he has shown his work across Alaska and the United States. He is currently living in Bayfield, Wisconsin. John's exhibition, The Sound of Wind and Grass, Images from Ugashik, Alaska, is on display in the Bear Gallery from February 5th to the 26th, 2021. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, John. <clears throat> hey, um, I guess thanks for coming. I, and thanks for watching the video. Um, I'm pretty excited to be able to get a chance to show you some of my work. And actually, it's going to be exciting because it's I get to show you some stuff, some work that didn't get included in the in the, uh, the exhibition. So um, I'm a photographer. And um, when I originally started this project off, I was wanting to um, go back to my, like my home village, like where my family and my ancestors were from, and have a chance to try and create, create work kind of in response to my ancestors being not being there actually uh there the spanish flu pandemic in 1918 did a um wiped out a lot of people that were living in that village it's a pretty sizable village and like a fit, the official census document says it it went from 300 people down to 38 people but i mean how how indigenous people were counted on the census aren't necessarily uh are, isn't always accurate, but um, my aunt is like my aunt and other family members have mentioned that maybe the village was as many, uh, there might have been a thousand people that were living there, but it was a pretty sizable village that got decimated. So uh, my grandma was one of three people that survived that pandemic. And, uh, but kind of one of the interesting things that happened is like my my grandma actually continued to live in the area after being raised in the next village over but she came back and she is fished in this close to the same spot as our people have for millennia so i wanted to go there and explore that and kind of see what it was like uh, being there and realizing that maybe there wasn't art that was Art hasn't been created in that spot in more than a hundred years, so that I wanted to explore that. And um, kind of a crazy thing happened when I started that is I didn't start it this previous summer. I started this project in, gosh, I'm 2019, um, the summer of 2019, and the first thing that happened, I, I was kind of making, uh, I was making, I had to, I wanted to be out there for a little while, and I. So it was commercial fishing out there. And the first thing that happened when I would, had been out there for a week and finally got on a fishing boat is I fell down, I broke my arm and had to get out of the village. But that's sort of a testament of just getting out and creating. Um, I made a lot of pictures to, to, at the start of it. So uh, that was kind of a fun thing to, interesting thing to be able to do. Um, but my work wasn't completed. Um, I didn't get a chance to meet people or or anything like that. And uh, so I had like last year about this time I committed to going back out again to go commercial fishing and to finish this project. And um, but sometime that sometime between. Um, me committing to going out fishing and buying a whole bunch of tickets and and that is there is a pandemic that happened but so I actually want to show you some of the work I made um, it's kind of I realized that maybe looking at my face isn't that interesting so um, I'm going to share you some share some of the work I made and uh, it's going to be the there's not really a rhyme or reason to the, the photos here. So we're gonna kind of bounce between old stuff and new stuff. And I'll mention what I see there. So 
one of the big differences I found I, that ended up happening between 2019 and the summer of 2020 were um, there were no, but there were actually no, but there were few people around. Um, so it may, it, it was interesting to me because things I could go back and look for things I could like in a normal working summer um, stuff gets moved around. Uh, so um, I guess I should probably say what I was really looking for when I, I was, I'm, I mean, I was starting to, I was working for, looking for like a contrast of um, between like occupied and unoccupied. And in 2019, when I first, one of my first impressions of being in this village was uh, how much went out to the village and how much went out to this place in rural, like Alaska, how much, when I say much, like how many things and uh, how much material just went out, goes out to rural Alaska. And it's not, in so many ways, it's not cost effective to bring it back, I guess. I guess mm -hmm. that's one way of thinking of it. So if there's signs of life and fishing everywhere, I guess, is, and, uh, and a lot of it is in this, some of this older fishing, fishing, uh, fishing stuff. Um, if you kind of see in the background, there's a, a wood boat in this photograph. And uh, that wood boat is a, a, one of the older Bristol Bay fishing boats, an old wood boat. It's now people use aluminum boats and fiberglass boats that are four times the size of this beast. But so I was, I was exploring, one of the things I went to explore is all these kind of what felt like modern ruins actually. Um, when I w went for looking for like actually signs of my relatives, um, or signs of my relatives or my ancestors, I, there really wasn't much of that. And it's um, the house sites are really difficult to see. And that there was something I didn't really feel that was appropriate to dig that much farther, but Let's see. So one of the things I like about this, something like this is like that, this show is kind of the sort of thing I was looking for. I was looking for this. Um, one of the things I really was looking for was I, I started seeking out places where uh, the wilds of Alaska had taken over. And in some ways that's a reflection of realizing that like my the house site and pretty much the sign any signs of life from a hundred years ago that or hundred years ago and beyond were were overtaken. Um, this is a this actually was a basketball court. <laughs> I I believe I sometimes I a couple of times when I've shown this piece I this photograph I pointed out that that was what it was. Um, I remember it from like about 20, a little bit more than 20 years ago when I, my one other time that went out to Bristol Bay to this um, is a pretty big deal that they had put this in, this basketball court in. So this was uh, 20, uh, something that's been 20 out there for 20 years. The basketball hoop has fallen down, but it's just, just out there. Um, in in the work that I in my the one of the things I pack around um, I have a small a small drone that I, I like to use I don't use it a lot but every once in a while it gives me a chance to get a different perspective on something but this is um, <clears throat> actually and this is it's kind of cool getting a different perspective of this because uh, after spending about this in 2020, I was spending this month out there, um, not really moving. Like this, actually, um, when I say not moving, not being able to really go much, very, very far past my my aunt's uh, fishing camp. I the, these lines of mud are kind of something I photographed a lot. I probably made a thousands of images of these 
these lines, just trying to figure out what they were and <laughs> make the best image I could of them or most expressive. Um, and this is this is where I was, this small little fishing village on the side of the Agashic River. Um, so I actually, I wanted to talk about a little, one of the things I, I have a note to talk about what didn't get made or didn't get created as part of this project. Um, when I set out that I actually didn't necessarily, wasn't really sure if the final product of this sound of wind of grass was gonna be uh, black and white print photos. I wanted to kind of open, be able to open things up and create, <clears throat> create a lot of digital imagery and, um, I was actually as interested in the people that actually are here as, um, and as as in I'm as interested in the people that actually live and work there as I am with people that aren't there anymore. Um, but that's something that went away in 2020. Um, there was wasn't really I couldn't didn't really feel like it was appropriate to. Um, go out and mix and mingle with with other villagers like I in a normal year I a normal year it'd be fun it's always nice to go have coffee at other people's places and visit and I was going to use that as a way of actually building rapports with people and and I and actually getting around and making more photographs of them um, I'm pretty used to being known as the weird guy with that always has a camera on me but it's another thing to actually build up enough trust to make photo actually start photographing people so um the village that i was in the camp that i was in um actually is under where this camp drone is but it wasn't really much bigger than the the camp that's in the foreground it's a few buildings so that's turned to, it almost felt like a prison being in that little confined space, even though I'm surrounded by so much wilderness, or I was surrounded by so much wilderness. Um, another similar uh, shot kind of showing how wide it is. Um, I'm drawn to water when I photograph. Um, <clears throat> just kind of, it's, an, I love those lines, <laughs> I guess. So I forget whether this one is, this is one of the first photographs I made while I was out there. And I'm glad I did, because they, um, somewhere between last year and this year, that they, they took this cabin down for one reason or another. Um, but I guess one of the things I kind of, I was bummed of, I, I was starting to learn more about, and I wish I had the two, actually had two full summers out there, is getting to learn the history of all these kind of semi-impermanent structures. Um, I mean, for me, one of the most fascinating things is how that, the contrast between permanence and impermanence out there like this might have been something that was 50, I wasn't sure if this is something that was 50 years old or 100 years old. But um, if you start looking, if you look at this close enough, you can kind of see the nails are starting to fall out of it. And this thing isn't long for the world. Um, what, um, one of the other fishermen, uh, kind of, it, he said something to me that, I forget what it was in response to, but I keep going back to it that the the land eats itself, or the land eats itself. I should say that I'm confident, but like how it's this is such a a wild place, and it just like if the way um, Bristol Bay and this this space in particular responds to something that's not being tended to is just almost to suck it up and to engulf it. Um, and it just, and everything takes, 
takes down and like the grass out there feels as persistent as any jungle that I've heard described. Like this place is so harsh that it like, I've seen things that are just that had been like the the basketball court that in 20 years it's it's kind of starting to get engulfed in the ground but and this in a hundred years this old cannery building has sucked has collapsed and is falling in and in the background far background you can see a old abandoned boat that is just starting to get sucked into the river and uh this is kind of that driver of that um the tides like tides and water and wind like the, the weather out here is pretty pretty relentless and there's nothing really to stop it but just like this boat like this is an old my grandpa's boat actually i got i learned that um and just if you don't if it's if you just set, let something sit um it starts falling apart and gets sucked up um like the only thing that is probably keeping this boat from just getting kind of eaten alive by the the tundra grasses this is like a one spot that my my uncle um he has, has a riding lawnmower and is constantly mowing it and, So, uh, uh, kind of that response to that grass. Um, so I'm trying to—I kind of feel like I've lost my spot a little bit. But um, starting off, do you have any questions? Yeah. Um, how did how did like this kind of permanence and impermanence and your uh, memories going back? being there like 20 years ago and then returning, how did that all kind of influence you creating these images? And like, did you think of yourself as documenting this place in kind of this time when you were there? Um, because uh, the things that are there are so impermanent and it's so subject to change or how do you, did you kind of conceive of yourself, I guess, as you're creating these images? So, <clears throat> I mean, it's really hard for me to, to shake that. I, I have like a, uh, <clears throat> um, a lot of my training was as a journalist and I practiced as a photojournalist for a while. And a lot of what I do is, is grounded in that. Like it's, it's documenting what's there. And uh, I mean, even, um, and trying to see, see what I can see and see what's there. Like I, I do see myself as um, a documentary person first. And I, I, and what I can do with things now, like I, let's see, I'm trying to think, um, that's a good question. So I, what I can, I can, I'm sorry. Um, oh, I put you on spot. I can, I can tell myself, uh, all right, I'm a documentary person and that's still kind of deep and a deep part of my DNA but how I can tell stories now is different than how, how I used to. Um, I can move things around and uh, explore things through time. So, I mean, I, there's part of me that I still have a little bit of a, um, like, I guess one of the things that drew me out here in this space, space too is in response to the, like the mining development that was in the Bristol Bay area and realizing that there was something that needed to be documented. Um, and that that was one aspect of this, but I don't know, it is, it's one of those things I realized I needed to uh, just get out there and see what I could do, uh, see what I could see. A lot of what I create and how I create involves just getting out into weird places or weird weather and um, the longer and I find that the longer I am in a space um, up to up into a point the, the more interesting this story becomes I guess yeah 
Did you, um, how did you feel kind of experiencing this place as an artist that you had been such a long time ago previously, you know, how did that, like your memories of your past experiences there and then coming back to take these photos, what was that like? You know, um, I mean, for me, I have the two, two different pasts that I have. Like I went out there one year as a high schooler which, or actually I just had graduated from high school. So um, I, I was just experiencing that as much as I could. So um, I was able to pull in a little bit of that nostalgia from that. Um, I was taken aback like just in that 20 years of how much had, how much had changed and what I could and couldn't do. Um, and I was just amazed over the between 2019 and 2020, like the the changes in the place. Like I I realized that I, I probably made more a lot of photos that were just almost documentary of the place or just documenting what I I was seeing, um, realizing that it was all going to change. Like like those old boats don't sit there forever. It's not necessarily a museum. Um, so I photographed a lot of things like that. I'm just trying to document the, like, I, I what feels like a fishing ephemera, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but the difference between um, now and then, I guess, for me was, I don't know, it was actually being able to see the differences and see how quickly things change, I guess. Sure, yeah, that must have been so interesting to have these memories from a long time ago. Um, and then the first visit and then seeing, so the difference between that and then the difference of the one years between your more recent visits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was, I, I probably should have been counting the photos. I just was kind of toggling through a couple photos as we were going to, but. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, what was it like working? Um, so were you simultaneously kind of taking these photos and then working, doing fishing as well? Yeah, yeah. What was that like kind of doing those two roles simultaneously and did they influence one another? You know, um, the, kind of an inter, there was enough downtime and fishing out there that like I was able to just make time to, to to photograph. I mean, I was always the guy that had a photo. I always had a camera on me whenever I was anywhere. And if or there's one close enough by me that if something cool is happening, I could photograph it. But I mean, the obvious, the quick, the obvious part is access. Like, um, especially last year, there was no reason to be in that village if I wasn't actually working. Mm -hmm. um, that probably actually is the biggest part. It's just simply access. Um, like even on a good year, there really isn't a, like there's, you could visit there, but there's not really much for you if you're not not actively working. Um, so I, I mean, I always, I packed a camera. I had a small little waterproof camera that I put in the pocket of my life jacket um, that so I always had something on me to photograph um, and, and get out and see what I could see. But like the biggest thing, yeah, it is access. Um, and I don't uh, know if, oh, go ahead. I don't know if this, uh, I don't know if any of the, I, I think there's a couple photos from that were from the fishing boat that were out here, but um, yeah. Um, how, what was your process of taking the photos? Were you like walking around with your camera? Um, did you come like spot a place and come back? Um, you know, like, were you basically, I guess, encountering places and spaces and kind of taking that photo in the moment? Or were you kind of some of them you saw and then wanted to get a, you know, come back at a more opportune time or set up something or what was your process? You know, there was, it was a little bit of both actually, of both of those. Like I, 
probably one of the things I did, I guess that was probably a different part of a uh, difference between the 2019 and 2020 experience that one week there. Um, I was making photographs during that. Actually, the only thing that saved that was I was making photographs of everything I saw and everything that was in front of me. And I was waking up and going out and taking with my camera before breakfast and making photos. And then after the work was done and after dinner was done, I was going out and making photographs. Um, and I, knowing that I did that, um, in 2020, I was spending more time, um, I was thinking of shots and I would see things I wanted to photograph in different light or um, that need a little bit more time and space to access. Um, but because that I was out there and probably time was the only thing that was really changing, like there were some things that I, there was a lot of shots that I had planned and I was just waiting for something else to change or light or waiting for a perfect light day or an interesting light day. Sure. Were you mostly, um, how were you accessing these areas? Were you like walking around, driving around, like on the water? A little bit, walk, a lot of walking. It was mostly walking. There was a couple times, there was a couple roads and four wheeler trailers here and there. So there's like, this is a photograph that I made from, from the, by driving out to it. Um, so, but this a lot of the kind of a photographs that were a product of the iterative like that iterative project pro, iterative process that i was just describing came from walking mm -hmm. like just in the, every evening checking out a little bit different this is definitely something that came from that um so like i was really interested in this cabin um and knowing that there is this kind of uh, giant volcano behind it that shows up from time to time. Um, I think it was two weeks before I saw it for the first time was this summer. Um, and just waiting for that light to be right. Like this, this is a like failing light shining on this and then um, a little bit in the background. But like things like this just kind of come, like either you can be lucky and see them or you can be lucky because you drive by them every day and sooner or later things things line up like this is something that would have been on the way to uh, a fishing camp or between where we parked our boat and where we had our camp gotcha. so, cool um but this is something that was definitely like that from that like photographing the same thing over and over like those the mud these the way the water and the mud played together was, uh, and not having many mountains they could usually see. <laughs> I think there's a lot of experimentation with, with little, I guess. Cool. Um, how did you initially come up with the idea for this project or like how long had that been kind of percolating in your head for? Um, you know, it is, was, this is something that was percolating in my head for a while. Um, actually, no, it was a pretty, I take that back. It was something that uh, came up a couple years ago as I was working, jamming on another project. Um, like sometimes putting together artist statements is, uh, turns almost feel like a hobby. And in some ways that that's something that can push, push my work. Um, at some point I might say, have typed something in there and like, okay, that's actually kind of an interesting way of looking at this. Like, I actually did want to go out and make pictures out here. Um, it kind of wanted to explore other places in Alaska um, during the summertime came up after selling. Like I was a commercial fisher, I was a commercial fisherman for a little while and I had sold this decided to make a change and sell my boat. And uh, this was something that coming, actually going out to Bristol Bay was uh, 
something I had wanted to do. And as I was trying to figure out like how to justify making photographs out there, uh, this is, I'm sh I'm forget the name that popped, the exact phrase that popped up into artist statement, but like, okay, that's something that was really interesting and kind of, it changed how I was process or how what I was going to do um for something like this I would I wanted to go I wanted to get together actually I had a loose idea of what I wanted to do when out here but I I wanted to let what I the photographs I made drive the project cool. um actually this is one of the only one of the few that I actually set up for the so this was in 2019 and this was in 2020. Um, I th for the for the show, I have it. I printed it in black and white. Um, so it's kind of like those little changes that happen from year to year. Yeah. And things that I know, I I had this photograph in my head, and I was able to get the the boats actually where I wanted them to be this time around. But. Nice. Um, I, you know, actually when I made it, just kind of the nature of digital photography, I, I, everything was, <clears throat> starts off color and then, um, I primarily, I like to use black and white, especially for a project like this. I want to kind of channel a lot of the more traditional landscape, um, photographers. So. Um, what are some of the ramifications for you or like the lasting experience of being on, you know, being there and taking these photos? Like, you know, for me, one of the lasting ramifications of this is that just actually the knowledge of what it felt like to be in such a remote Alaska place during a pandemic. There was, I didn't really anticipate the, like all the feelings of just being out there. Like there's a lot of paranoia and being scared of other people in there in the village that should be your friends and being this weird suspicion of outsiders, knowing that I was one of the out, being one of the people to come into the village, knowing that I was one of the outsiders, um, that, that is definitely a ramification of that. Like, mm -hmm. I just, I'd like knowing how that, knowing about that is mm -hmm. it's huge. I never, and something I wouldn't have done, <laughs> would have known of before. Right. Yeah, what a unique experience that must have been. And like something you never would have known in advance or planned for. Yeah, I mean, I would have, like if I, I probably, I, if I was just going out there to create art, I probably, I wouldn't have went out there in the summer of 2020. Like I was uh, the, the, I was kind of driven by fishing and I was taking the lead from other people out there um, that were seem to be okay with, um, with going and fishing, knowing that we were going to be socially distancing and having nobody show up and yeah being safe about it yeah well very cool i don't know if i have any other particular questions did you have anything else you wanted to touch on um let me see i have one or two more pictures to show um this is probably the peak peak mud um and as far as um some of the um, trying to create a little bit of a narrative here. I actually wanted to make sure this is one of the pieces of, that actually showed some sign of life from out there. Like the photos actually are a little bit, I knowing, knowing how they look, they actually come out come kind of bleak. There's really no signs of life or so on. There's a lot of signs of life that were out there, but no signs of people recently. Mm -hmm. But this is a 
pretty recent. Uh, this is actually, well, this is one of the fishing boats that set net fishing boats out there. Cool. But, and I'm going to kind of rapid fire because I wanted to find one photo. So you didn't. Okay. Let's just, we can just end there. Um, at least as far as the slideshow. Oh, man. Is it going to be? Okay. That's what I want to stop at. Oh, cool. um, so this is one of my favorite photos that I made out there. I, there was just kind of a, um, I really actually wanted to figure, like my goal with these photographs is to show how it fe feels to be out in a place like rural Alaska with nobody out there, like or with very few people. Um, the way the pandemic ended up hitting Ugashik this year was that um, about a third of the people went out there to fish out of there. Like there's 10 set net sites, I believe, that were out there and only, gosh, three people or three crews decided to fish out there this year. Um, actually, was it three or four? It was three. I think a fourth fisherman decided to try it, but like, so there was very few people out there like fewer than fewer than there usually would be. So it was possible to actually go out and not see anybody. But so and in this like it the two things that I could hear so a lot it, when I was out there is that there's a sound of a uh, like wind power because there's a lot of wind power, but it's it was it's almost overwhelming what the grass sounds like, I guess, when it's blowing in the constant wind out there. Wow. Yeah, and you can really see that in this photo. I mean, you can really get a sense of the grass moving and kind of the grass is encompassing the majority of the image, you know. And this is one of the photos that, like, actually, the other thing that happens, like, I start I was able to go back and go back and I was starting to think of, um, trying to think of different ideas and different things. And this is one of the, uh, being able to go back and like edit my photos. And I was, I looked through the photo, I had been photographing that, that particular cabin multiple times. Um, and over several days and realized like, actually, oh man, I need to have some, I was looking for, something that showed more of what it felt like. So I brought my, bust out my tripod and uh, sat up and made this and moved it, moved it around and trying to figure out the best, best place for it. And, and uh, got a little bit lucky with one of the longer exposures and that's what made this photo. Very cool. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of, um, do you have any more questions or do we? Uh, I think all the ones I thought of, I think we've kind of addressed, so. Okay, I think I think that might be about it. Um, Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, doing this. It was wonderful to hear you talk more about your work. Um, sure. And we, uh, if folks are able, we encourage you to grab your mask and visit the Bear Gallery to take in the sound of wind and grass. Um, the exhibition is on display from February 5th to the 26th, 2021, and the gallery is open Monday to Friday from noon to 6 p.m. Thank you so much for watching our Artist Talk with John Hagen.